Straight from the initial homepage load and deep down into subpages and sub subpages, we use website to try and make our point, convey our idea and make a sale. And when you boil it down, a website is nothing more than a glorified sales pitch, a pitch to make a sale. Sometimes that sale will be for an e-commerce product like Allbirds or for a product sign up like Slack. But the principles of selling become just as important when we're trying to sell services like a haircut or even sell ideas like with Ted. No matter what you're trying to sell, bags, productivity, courses. There are proven ways to optimize for more sales and more signups directly through your website. So let's jump in and see how you can do just that. So let's look at what is universal. That is the fundamental principle of selling through a website, no matter what website we're talking about. And let's give this a name, the USP, the universal serial bus, sorry, the universal selling principle. And the principle is surrounded by the idea that everything we're doing on a website is selling and in turn overcoming objections that are in the mind of a customer. In theory, we could convert all the traffic that comes to our website if we can convince customers of the value of whatever product or service that we're talking about and overcome the objections that they have. But we obviously know that converting all traffic isn't realistic because there are so many reasons that customers hesitate to move forward to that next step. So first we have to ask, what do we want our customer to do? Sign up, check out, contact us. And what does our customer need to know before they can do that? What objections do they have? Because no matter what we're asking our customer to do, there will be objections, reasons to pull out, to give up. And we want to reduce this as much as we possibly can. And we can reduce this in a couple of different ways. We can make the first move frictionless. We can show risk reversal. We can display social proof. We can provide options and we can answer pressing questions. And we're going to look at each of these individually in a second, but everything we're going to look at, all of these techniques, can be strengthened by using them alongside analytics tools. First, you set yourself up for success through best practices, and then you track that success. Analytics, heat maps, user recordings, A-B tests. These are all ways to help you further refine your website over time and be able to test new conversion ideas. So let's jump into each technique now. Making the first move frictionless. Start free. Get started. It's free. In fact, it's not even surprising to see a sign up for free on a product that costs $30,000 a year. Because if a customer can try the product without being weighed down by having to pay straight off the bat, then they can see the value and move up to a paid plan. All of this because we're trying to make the first move that the customer makes as simple as possible, doubling down on the ease of sign up, check out, or inquiry. You might even make the first step in the journey on the home page, enter your username, and you're in. But if the first step seems too big to ask for, like making a purchase or filling out a long form, then it's better to have a smaller step first. And the most common smaller step is getting the customer's email. And if you're trying to get an email, it's important to have a good reason why the customer would give the email over. So if you're a business and you add an email sign up to your footer, why on earth are people going to sign up? What are they going to get out of it? As soon as you make that sign up a free resource instead, you're making it more convincing to customers to want to opt in, and you're making the first step in that conversation easier. You might use an email form for getting 10% off your first order, or a free email course, but whatever you do to get a customer email, you can now continue that conversation through the email that's moved past the website. So again, that first step that you want your customer to make, how are you going to make it as simple and convincing as possible? Show risk reversal. Your customer is about to make a decision and this decision could be an expensive one. Risk reversal copy helps reassure customers who are hesitating just as they're about to pay or sign up. It's an easy way to tell customers that they don't need to worry as they can take back a purchase or in the case of a free sign up, they won't even need to pay to try out your product. A sign up with no commitment, no credit card required, no software to install. Free and easy returns. Every course includes a no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. And you'll notice that most of these risk reversals are in close proximity to where a sign up, purchase, or upgrade button is. Because by putting it near a call to action, you're communicating with your customer right when they're having final doubts. So what is the biggest thing your customer is worrying about just when they're about to pay or sign up? And how can you convey that the purchase isn't a no givesies backsies kind of deal? Display social proof. Customers want to know that they aren't the first ones to use a product, to make a purchase, or to work with the business. They want to see a track record of happy customers who have already been there and done that. In the same way that we'll eat at a restaurant when a friend recommends it, we're a lot more likely to buy a product when we see countless great reviews of people who are already using it, or testimonials of people who have taken the same journey. There are many ways that social proof can be collected and displayed, such as star-rated reviews, a gallery of tweets, or just a fancy testimonial card slider. 
Either way, the decision of how you want to display testimonials isn't usually the hard part. It's collecting them in the first place. If you don't have a way that you're following up on your customers for feedback and testimonials, then you're losing sales. You can use integrations such as Hotjar or Intercom to get reviews or general feedback that can be used to either make your product or service better, be collected for testimonials, or if you're working as some kind of change agent as an individual or as a studio, make sure to follow up with your client at the end of a project, either with a catch-up call to debrief or just through an online form. Provide options. Do you like your trinket in blue, red, or black? Do you want all the features or just the essentials? Do you want to pay monthly or yearly with a discount? Any different options that you provide for customers, you're changing the question for the customer from should I make this purchase to what option should I choose? You're giving them different ways that they can say yes. In a SaaS model, providing multiple options has the intention of getting customers to start with a simple cheap plan, but showing the benefits of scaling, of accommodating to different needs when a customer needs them. In e-commerce, the different options will be through the product itself or through shipping and payment options. As an individual or team who provides services, these options come about after the website, when a customer has already reached out and you're showing the different ways you can work together. No matter what way you're selling, if you can't provide options for the product or service itself, you can still provide options for the way it's provided. Standard or overnight delivery, pay monthly or yearly, pay up front with a discount or in three installments. Either way, the decision is what way do I want to continue rather than do I want to continue. Answering pressing questions. When you deal with enough customers, you start to see the common threads of the questions and queries that they have. Adding answers for the frequently asked questions to your website is a double whammy. Number one, you're more likely to convince customers to sign up, and number two, you're less likely to get customers reaching out with questions that they have. Can I request a refund? Will spend desk scale with my business? Do you work with startups? You want to make sure all of your questions are coming directly from your customers and not you. So it's good practice to keep a document or spreadsheet of real questions you get from customers to evaluate which ones come up most often. And this section is often added just above or below your final call to action or around your pricing, or you might give it its own page entirely. So that's the most popular techniques used to increase sales through a website. And these techniques can be strengthened through an email strategy to continuing that conversation off the website, and it can be improved and refined on the website over time with analytics tools. Now all of this, everything that we've looked at so far focuses on improving conversions, converting more customers that are coming to your website through to a sale. But none of this is important if you have a different kind of problem, a traffic problem, and not getting enough traffic is a completely different issue to look at, and one that I'll cover in a future video. But let's bring it back to the start, the two questions to ask to improve sales through your website. Number one, what do you want the customer to do on your website? And number two, what does your customer need to know before they can do that? What objections do they have? What concerns are they thinking about? And how can you relieve those objections? So if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like or a comment and let me know what you want to see a future video on. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.